it every Saturday morning from the McDonald's across from the Madison High School. Thanks for joining us this morning, this beautiful Saturday morning. This morning we're going to talk with Heather Foy. We're going to kind of hodgepodge things. We've got Girls on the Run coming up. We've got, um, of course, wintertime. Folks need to get exercise. We'll talk uh, maybe some flyer stuff. We, we, we'll just hodgepodge, Heather. That sounds good to me. Good morning to you. Good morning. Thank you for having me. It is a gorgeous morning. It is. It's a beautiful Saturday, but uh, like 22 degrees outside. That's that's too that's too cold for an old guy, you and know. And I will be outside at Franklin today <laughs> yeah. watching a great football game. A little warmer even, two hours north. Yeah. A little, colder probably. Yeah, yeah most likely. indeed it will be, but a uh, big football game today, so that, that'll be exciting. Big, big game. Big bell game. Exciting. Yeah. Let's talk about Girls on the Run. You've got a big event coming up tomorrow, and I kind of want to hit on that first. Um, it's it's your, your annual final. 5K fun run, different location this year. We've, we've kind of talked about it a couple times on the air, but yeah, kind of go into some details. We are excited. It is kind of the culmination of our season, even though each site will still come back for a couple lessons and then a community service project and a celebration. This is the big community event. So um, many folks around here have crossed the finish line of a 5K, but this one's a little special, a little unique. It really does celebrate the girls in our program, but it's not just for those girls. We need community members to embrace this. It is a fundraiser, so we appreciate when folks will you know pay their fifteen dollars to come walk or run and be a part of the excitement it is at Hanover College which is a brand new location for yeah. us they've been such fabulous hosts um, and we're really excited to be right there at their gorgeous stadium football field we have use of the track that's where our start and finish is going to be mm -hmm. and I've even had some locals say gosh I don't, I don't know if I've ever been to the college no. so you know me growing up you know around the college and as an adult spending so much time there um, you know, it's kind of like Clifty Park what a treasure in our community so this is a great way for people to come see the beauty of the college as I ran the course earlier this week and of course have driven it many times <laughs> getting my bearings for our water stop and mm -hmm. mile markers it's just a, a gorgeous place um, you know, to go for a run and to have an afternoon full of smiles. The race itself starts at 3, and we call it the time prior our pre-race fun. So you can register, but we have lots of stations and booths, almost like you might picture with a school fair, mm -hmm. maybe a few activities, and parents can make a sign to cheer on their runners, and we have a new kindness rocks and a gratitude station and our fun happy hair and face painting, and we're just... Um, I know it's going to be chilly, but hopefully sunny and a lot of smiles and excitement even before the race begins. And then 3 o'clock is the start. And we hope folks will come. You can register on site. And then if you can't walk or run, just be a part. Stand along the college campus somewhere to cheer for the participants. Come to the stadium so you can see the finish line. It really is um, going to be a great day. When you, when you go to put together, and I don't think a lot of folks, and myself included, understand what all it takes to lay out a, a 5 K course or a 10 K course or whatever the, the, the distance should be. You got to find that right path to, to keep everybody to get the right distance and to keep everybody safe. Absolutely, and of course, with many of our participants being young girls, mm -hmm. um, you know, safety is an even greater concern. Um, but even when I know I'm going to have um, folks maybe um, in our, their senior years out there walking, you're you are leery of uneven sidewalk surfaces or in some cases, um, in mud. You know, post rain. Our former girls and their coach went around Johnson Lake for part of the course. We love that, but there were years where you were leaping over metal, mud and water puddles. So safety is a concern. You know, we've got the beauty of the campus and even um, the view and the point, you know, with the, the river view is amazing. But logistically, it's not as easy as one might right. think. And it, it does take months of work and countless volunteers. I know the other 5K race that I chair, it takes about 20 great volunteers. And that's even with an electronic timing system. We will have not even counting our quote cheerleaders along the course and direction givers, we'll have um, you know, up to about 50 volunteers tomorrow. So mm -hmm. that in itself, um, you know, takes a lot of work and a lot of effort to coordinate that. Of course, totally worth it. Right. I think I've worked till almost midnight every night the last couple of weeks, and it is, it's worth it um, to see the smile on these girls' faces. And, um, you know, you hope a 5K is maybe an inviting distance for folks out there that maybe aren't exercisers. They're, they're probably not going to find it, sign up for their first marathon not having first crossed a 5k course so 3.1 miles you're going to walk that and and then some at a given right. day at king's island so 
you, you can probably come out and walk the course. Uh, if you train a little bit, you're going to probably walk it faster or maybe run a little bit, but it's an inviting mm -hmm. um, distance for folks even that may not feel like they're ready. And our girls, of course, are paired up with a running buddy, so we so appreciate um, the girls finding a running buddy or, or running buddies that I provide and local runners and volunteers that mm -hmm. say, hey, pair me up. I'll cheer her on along the way. I'll keep her safe. I'll give her motivation, you know, to help see her through to the end. I saw a picture, and I, uh, it doesn't, it's not etched in my mind, but I saw a picture, I think it was this morning, that somebody had posted about the first team of girls on the run, runners, yes. um, and there was how many? Twelve. Twelve, okay. Yes. And that was 2009. Nine. You come a long way. We have. We really, really have. And sometimes it's not discouraging, but it's overwhelming when I look at other councils across the country that have hundreds mm -hmm. upon hundreds of girls. They also serve big areas, uh, obviously big cities, of course. Sure. You know, there's councils in San Diego and New York and Austin, Texas, mm -hmm. and even our Cincinnati council here is huge. They also serve multiple counties, big communities. For us to grow from 12 girls at one site in 2009, to 93 girls um, and really this is kind of a part-time gig so to speak it's just part of my regular work duty with right. um, our wellness program which you know we're so appreciative of the support that the hospital gives out in the community this is our biggest community outreach program but you know some girls learn councils are their own standalone not-for-profit they have full-time staff on board and you know I squeeze this time in with my other duties for work and then we have a program coordinator Renee Grody who helps me um, you know, certain weeks of the year especially of course during the season and that that's a blessing but we love our volunteer coaches we love our volunteers but to see the growth when I looked at that picture I know those girls I've coached them in, in dance and I've of course coached them in girls in the run I know many of their families those girls now they were third fourth fifth grade then they're now seniors in high school the last crew graduating and they're freshmen and sophomores in college and so to stay connected with many of these girls and I remember seeing that first group knowing, yeah, I don't know if any of these girls are ever going to be skilled runners. And <laughs> right. we've talked about this. That's okay. Right. But if they find a passion for healthy habits and for knowing that exercise is important, even if you ultimately don't end up liking you know, to run, so to speak, or run mm -hmm. distance. And that that's really exciting. A um, couple of those girls, I, I know emotionally, socially, mentally, the life lessons we teach, I know following them then through their junior and high school years, what a blessing Girls in the Run was for them. So, you know, we hope we're continuing that tradition and now impacting so many more girls. It started locally in 2009. How long has this thing been going actually nationally? Since 96, 1996, a guy named Molly Barker started it in Charlotte. And Charlotte, North Carolina is still the headquarters mm -hmm. for Girls in the Run in all 50 states. Um, you know, I, I, one thing that's neat for me, I think this weekend there are truly thousands of girls crossing finish lines all across the country because this is kind of the end of the season. They're not all on the exact same day, but they're this time of year all over the country. Many councils do spring and fall. We do fall only, um, particularly because of the importance of the Molly Dottillo run in the spring in this community and what that race means and, and still hitting kids that young age. So we focus on fall for our program, which is busy time of year for me, uh, but that's okay. It, it's um, just really been exciting to see see the growth and uh, the number of girls that we impact locally and then nationally last year they made a big announcement that girls in the run had reached their one millionth girl served oh, wow. um, you know, since its inception so that's mm -hmm. pretty exciting on a grand scale do you know what the the driving force behind putting this all together back in the mid 90s was yeah you know Molly Barker was going through kind of just some uh, as a runner but interesting times in her life and mm -hmm. Kat tells a story about going out for a run in the rain and just having this aha moment that what running does for her that she can clear her mind and you know turn to it for a time of comfort um, you know exercise in general can do that for you when you need to release stress so naturally it, when we're exercising we're our heart rates are up but in a good way we're releasing endorphins and you know it really even though uh, it's stressful sometimes to squeeze it in on the calendar it is a stress reliever when mm -hmm. we make ourselves do it and she kind of had this aha moment about some things in her personal life she was going through um, as a female and going through a divorce and just some rough times in her life and what the message she wanted to share with girls and kind of sketched out notes for a rough curriculum mm -hmm. you know and you fast forward and we now are considered a positive youth um, development program and you know a huge national board 
big time sponsors, Justice 31, Target, mm -hmm. New Balance has been a sponsor for, for years. So you, you see these big time sponsors and you know how, how big the program has, has grown. But now the structure that's in place with de really delivering a, um, an impactful curriculum and it's delivered the same way across the country because the National Coach Training Certification we have and it's pretty, been pretty amazing to see it um, see it transform. Now, the 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 run tomorrow is that only for girls on the run girls it's such a great question because even yesterday I had somebody say oh I've always wanted to do that yeah. you know, maybe I'll have a daughter someday in it uh -huh. so she can I can run with her and I said well you can run this Sunday right it is for anybody and that is a message we still years later try and get out there yes the attention and some of the special treats so to mm -hmm. speak are, are um, really put on our, our girls in our program but we I promise it will still be fun for anybody we have goodie bags we're one of the only races locally that does a little poly bag with a few fun goodies and some door prizes and again just fun activities that anybody can participate in so a, a great way for a listener to get involved and you'll see the power of the program right. is to actually come walk or run and that check-in registration again is 130 to 3 at um, the field at the track at Hanover College and then the race kicks off at 3. Again um, Heather it folks want to come out tomorrow and be a part of it they can do that if they want to come out and be a cheerleader they can do that if they want to come out and see what's going on they can do that as well it's open for anybody it is gosh I'll take your money if you want to come <laughs> out we have, we'll have a nice donation jar and right. um, the program is a costly program to operate sure. and locally we actually charge less than the national average um, so even girls that pay the full amount um, this year with um, the excitement of giving girls a brand new pair of shoes every girl in the program even the full dollar amount that the that folks might be able to pay the full registration fee that only covered half of what the program cost us and we have a full and partial scholarship on top of that so yeah any donation large or small you know helps we certainly appreciate our, our local sponsors and businesses that help um, you know give a little bit to cover the cost of our shirts and really you know I often have folks in the not-for-profit sector that will say to me well, I think we're gonna do a 5k you know as a fundraiser it's it's trendy it's you know it, it is fun it does bring a lot of smiles and it seems like it it would be a great fundraiser um, you know unless you have the valuable support of businesses sure. giving hundred two hundred dollars you know to put their logo on the shirt it really you know we do have expenses obviously program expenses but even expenses tomorrow in and itself um, you know, unless you have folks there you know paying to rock, walk or run or additional right. donation dollars you know it's not a big money maker like some folks say but of course that's not our mission that's right. not why we're there which is a good thing sure. I usually tell folks that say well, we need to raise you know a two thousand dollars for this I think we're gonna do a 5k I, I usually will say have a yard sale or have a bake sale and say <laughs> not that I don't want more 5k's in the community but right. yeah we we really need bodies there and we certainly are so appreciative of those donations that come in yeah it, it I think temperatures in the mid to upper 40s tomorrow so it's gonna be a little warmer than today so that's that's gonna be good and and again if you want to get involved tomorrow you can it'll be at Hanover College let's let's kind of shift gears a little bit off of girls on the run we'll come back to that at the end of the program but let's talk a little bit about we're getting in the cold we're getting into winter um, and we we've talked about this multiple times when we've talked about uh, staying fit and exercising during the winter months and how you're gonna do that because everybody's bottled up because it's cold and nobody wants to walk in the cold and guilty I don't but uh, you know you got to do something to stay fit what can you do yeah, you know I hope um, as somebody you know my background's in exercise physiology and somebody who's worked in the field of wellness and um, exercise for so long I hope that people have an indoor and an outdoor passion for fitness I know what outdoor exercise can do for you as far as being in nature and a stress relief and a lot of mental health information out now in a recent study that talked about um, depression mental health and even tied in with suicide which we know that those are alarming rates in our community talked about um, enjoying nature and being outside and, and how good that is for the soul so I do love to ski I love to hike I know what being outdoors can give to me so often folks who want just daily physical activity rely on that in the summer they take for granted well I'm you know I play recreational softball or I, I do yard work I mow my yard I pull some weeds oh I'm a, I'm a farmer those things are fabulous but then when the winter weather their hits uh, their body is, is pretty sedentary it, it truly is and we see a seasonal weight gain for a lot of folks um, 
no a disrespect that's worse for men just yeah. just mentioning statistically season awakening is a little worse for men so um you know that's hard that yo-yoing is very difficult on our bodies we get older it's harder for metabolism it's a little hard for women postmenopause. so that yo-yo weight gain and loss is not ideal and we see that often in the winter so uh, those you know daily quick walks that we squeeze in when it's gorgeous outside or so you know walking the kid in the stroller taking the dog for more walks and then some of those recreational activities tennis golf think of a lot of men on the golf course you know just into retirement years and if they can they love to be on that golf course daily all of a sudden winter hits and they're not getting any exercise so we want folks to have an indoor passion as well and I know sometimes people think that treadmills are called dreadmills um, I promise and um, indoor cardiovascular activity can you know be ideal one one nice thing about an indoor equipment like a Stairmaster a bicycle um, a treadmill an elliptical cross trainer um, you know this um, step mills rowing machines those are ideal because they sometimes can help you keep a constant pace many good ones have programming that you can follow along to right. change the intensity they're safe in nature you're probably not going to fall off that indoor bicycle like like you might outside or hit a stump and you know or have a car get too close to you so that you know that's ideal temperatures controlled indoors you know so any health club you go into you know if the thermostat set at 70 um you know, work up a little sweat but you don't have to stress too much about lung conditions for winter factors that are dangerous or on the flip side in the summer that heat and humidity is is dangerous and dehydration is a grand concern for folks so if you can find an indoor passion whether it be just cardio equipment that you know music watching a TV talking to a friend of course group classes you know we have, we're, we're very blessed in this community with so many great group exercise classes that folks can attend you know I've taught aerobics since I was 17 in college so I know the power of group exercise as an instructor is leading you you don't have to think you just follow along and I often will have folks say, oh, I don't know, I, what is people, well, somebody's going to watch me, or I have two left feet, or I bet I'll be two beats behind. And I, my response with a smile is always, no offense, they're not going to watch you. They're watching me, sadly, right. or they're watching the instructor because they're trying to keep up. And, yeah. and folks in that are brave to finally come to a class say the same thing. Oh, yeah, we're just watching the teacher. Who cares if you're two steps behind? If you are burning calories, if you are smiling, you know, in a strength training class, you have to worry even less about rhythm or following any kind of tempo because you're, you know, working on sets and circuits and reps. And, mm -hmm. you know, that's a, another great way. If you've never picked up a dumbbell or it's been years and you see equipment at a place and think, yeah, that's intimidating or my equipment at home needs a good dusting it's being used for a clothing rack right now you know being in an indoor setting with others where a teacher can guide you through it's just like having a personal trainer you sure. know where they can guide you through the workout and you, oh yeah that's how I work my triceps you know I can even practice that on my own it really that the 45 minutes an hour you know 30 then an hour workout flies by when you're in a group setting with an instructor with music so you know there are many many great indoor options in this community for exercise happen to know a place um, but I, I have to say when I have my wellness coordinator hat on I just want people exercising I don't care if that's with a videotape at home um, you know if that's in one of many you know indoor exercise facilities sure. in town we have a lot of great great options so um, you know I think knowing indoors and your question referring to you know sedentary and motivation yeah. to be outside you know indoors would be a big draw and we want folks even if that's indoor recreational church basketball in the sure. winter you know we need you to have an indoor outlet when you're outside you just have to be smart you mm -hmm. do have to dress in layers um, you got to pay attention to obviously unsafe surfaces that might be icy here right. in the next few months and you know just be be super smart <laughs> It being super smart and trying to exercise and trying to do but trying to do something just doing something instead of doing nothing yeah and the motivation in the winter is difficult and we use our busy calendars of course as an excuse I have sure. folks that'll say oh there's no way I could follow an exercise routine in December you know I'm just that yeah I'm too busy the stress of the holidays and really with the stress of the holidays that's a great time to squeeze in a quick right. 15 minute sweat session because you know it is a, a stressful month and the calendar gets busy 
but then we roll into January and there's New Year's resolutions resolutions set. So you know, we don't want you to be completely sedentary in December. The extra um, calories that we consume, um, beverage and food calories in December and into New Year's. So it's January 2nd often that people start right. visiting those goals. My husband being in the field so long jokingly says that February is a busy, busy month for him because January it takes, you'd think January would be, takes folks about a month to decide if they're going to get off the couch and right. actually make a commitment to, to exercise but you know we tell folks you're worth it you know if you don't have a decent pair of exercise shoes you're not going to stick with it very long you know invest in them save the money for them ask for them for Christmas because if you've got shin splints or a bad knee and you're wearing shoes that are 10 years old or don't fit you well you know it, women that don't wear exercise with a good sports bra on or yeah. good wicking clothing you know we exercise in thick cotton and we wonder why we're uncomfortable right. so you know, those things are important and they help us um, stick with the schedule a little better when exercise is a little more inviting or our bodies physically feel better as well. It's kind of like that treadmill. You know, somebody says, oh, their treadmill at home is wobbly. Well, if it, you know, two ninety nine and you bought it at Sears, <laughs> you know, that sounds silly, but industrial treadmills, there's, there's $6,000 treadmills. Yep. There's a reason why they can take a pounding and, um, you know, there's a reason why they're, they're, um, you make exercise a little more inviting and, yeah. and um, you know, so good equipment can can certainly make a big deal. I think in the winter, even having an accountability partner, somebody that, you know, you can either go to the gym with or trade exercise schedules. We've talked about that. Or, you know, sometimes trade dietary schedules. Sure. Um, you know, folks sometimes are awful brave. They'll weigh themselves in front of a friend even once a week, just like going to Weight Watchers. It's that accountability. So I think even in the winter months, that's important. But looking to, uh, before we take a break, looking to it at, if you're looking to eat healthier, or, or well, let's, let me rephrase it, if you're looking to, to shed some pounds, um, it, it's it's hard to begin with, but once you start seeing results, man, that's a motivator. Absolutely. You know, if I tie a 20-pound sack of potatoes around my waist and try and run up and down stairs a few times, uh, and I take that, you know, 20-pound weight off, oh, it's so much easier to get up, up those stairs. So it's easier to get in and out of your car or up and down off the ground you feel better not only do those clothes feel a little better and yes I get excited I'm in those jeans that I haven't been able to wear for a while but we physically do have more energy so it makes you second guess that piece of cheesecake it mm -hmm. makes you order the small fry instead <laughs> of the extra large um, even if, if you have have a few it makes right. us think about our portion sizes yeah. and if something's really worth it because once you do start seeing results and then of course what you don't see physically you smile because you know your blood pressure is getting better you know you know your cholesterol levels are thanking you for you know better dietary choices and making your health a priority so yeah with things that are tangible and even the intangibles we yeah. don't see it's it's worth it we we've talked about um girls on the run of course we talked about exercise i, I do want to hit on the flyers because i don't know where you're at in your season now where are you at oh we're in an exciting part of our season yeah. learning learning routines oh, wow. working on choreography yes yeah. testing our memories a bit and patience for <laughs> Adults, I have 19 kindergarten and first graders on my tiny team, so wow. they are fun. They bring smiles, but um, I'm I'm not great <laughs> yet, but I'm sure I'm getting there in my gray hat this morning. Um, <laughs> It is a fun time for our season. Mm -hmm. We started Flyers. I started coaching um, in 92 and then started Flyers in 2002. And after six years of having my high school team, and that's when we transitioned to having little ones as well to kind of build the program. So we have 76 girls this year from kindergarten to 11th grade my senior team um, my, I don't have any seniors that I'll lose this year which makes me smile I'd love yeah. to have them all back next year but we have um, six teams I'm personally coaching three of those and then of course kind of manage all all six but I have great coaching staff and you know, a lot of girls I've coached um, you know and now they're coaching with me which is you know a lot of fun to keep those friendships going and um, we really will focus a lot as you've seen us as an MC at games and doing radio broadcasts we perform at halftime of many games sure. we're so appreciative of the athletic directors locally that allow us to come and get some practice in front of an audience not quite sure of our competition schedule I think our two to three oldest teams will probably go you know at least to one competition we've been blessed to go to Pacers game and mm -hmm. perform pre-game the last couple of years which is fun and we've got a, a date set for that um, this year too. Not sure yet which teams are going up there, but yeah, um, yeah we start in August, and that's a time where we kind of work on some conditioning and some dance specific um, flexibility and conditioning. We start kind of assessing their skills and level um, for each team. We begin working on you know, those dance skills and a lot of athletic moves like jumps and leaps and turns. And you know, it's a little traditional than a 
and traditional compared to dance studio. So it's right. not, you know, tap jazz and ballet. We have a couple good places in town that offer that, but ours is more of a palm, athletic, hip hop focus. And then um, this is the time of year now we're learning routines because mm -hmm. by the end of the year, calendar year, we need to know those routines ready to perform. As soon as January hits after the Christmas holiday, we'll be in front of some audiences at local games for sure. Oh, that's, that's neat. Uh, before we wrap it up, let's get back to Girls on the Run because I want to hit on that again on if folks want to come out tomorrow, can they and what do they need to do? Yes, we'd love to see you at Hanover College. Just come directly. Even if you don't know where that is, just drive through campus. You'll see it, I promise. Um, it is on toward the scenic side, so that scenic view that we often come off uh, of from 62. And come to the football field track between 1.30 and 3. That's when you can sign up the day of, participate in all the pre-race fun, and 3 o'clock at the track is where the race starts. I promise it's not 12 laps around the track for three miles. We wind through the beautiful campus, and then we come back to the track to finish the race yeah it's going to be a fun time yes so that'll be a lot of people hopefully yes yeah. yes and we're very appreciative you're going to be there yep. serving as our MC for the event the music adds a lot of fun and yeah we're thrilled to have you there thank uh, you my pleasure Heather we appreciate you coming by I know you got to get out of here going to go north and go Panthers go Panthers that's right all right that's Heather Foy stopping by and talking with us on Coach's Corner this morning we appreciate her coming by we'll do it all again next week live from McDonald's here on Madison's Hilltop Jordan Bear my engineer in studio I'm Tim Torrance live from McDonald's this Coach's Corner on Works 96.7.